Hello and welcome to the Run Testers, my name's Nick and this is our first run review of the Brooks Hyperion Max. So the Hyperion Max is a new addition to Brooks's Hyperion range, which also includes the Hyperion Tempo, uh, which is good for going forward, going to be known just as the Hyperion, and then the Hyperion Elite 3, which is the carbon plate racing shoe. And the Max is more similar to the Tempo. It's a plateless, lightweight, fast training shoe, but compared to the original Hyperion Tempo, it's got a little bit more cushion, as you'd expect from the Max in the name, and it's also more of a rocker design. Uh, this fits with the general plan Brooks has to update its popular lines by adding a Max option that has a bit more cushioning and more of a rocker to basically give a different ride feel option uh, to popular shoes. The Hyperion Max costs £160 in the UK or $170 in the US. It's an incredibly lightweight shoe. It's 217 grams or 7.65 ounces in my UK size 9. That's actually even lighter than the Hyperion Tempo, which is around 226 grams in my size. You've got an 8mm drop and the stack height hasn't been confirmed yet by Brooks, but I think it's still it's not actually a very max shoe. Like If you're considering max to be things like 40mm shoes or max cushion shoes like the Asics Gel Nimbus, this isn't the case with this. It's just got a little bit more cushioning than the Hyperion Tempo. So you're probably looking at low 30s for the heel stack height, low to mid 30s. You've got a lightweight and thin mesh upper with a fair amount of padding around the back of the shoe there, considering that this is such a lightweight shoe. The midsole is made from Brooks's uh, DNA Flash Foam, which is a nitrogen-infused EVA foam. It's very, very lightweight, but not necessarily as springy and bouncy as some of the uh, other materials on the market, which in use nitrogen-infused TPU foams or PIVA foams. You've got great rubber coverage on the outsole. Again, considering how lightweight the shoe is, you've got really good forefoot coverage in particular. Uh, with a bit of exposed foam there but nothing in key impact areas like i say one of the key features of the max is the the really pronounced rocker design with the big heel bevel and the nice toe spring there compared to the tempo which had a more traditional build more of a kind of snappy ride to it this should be a little bit more of a rocking and rolling shoe in line with the fact that brooks has used its rapid roll geometry to create that rocker the fit so when I um, first put on the Tempo, I thought it was a little bit short for my for my size six feet, and I thought, well, I, maybe I would go a half a size up. Um, but it was but it was fine. It, it didn't have any issues. But I would have probably, in hindsight, gone about half a size up. So when you line these two shoes up, they look remarkably like the same. But on my feet this one felt like it had that extra length in it. So I don't know what, how that how that is. It might be the way that my foot sits at the back um, in the two shoes differently because like lining them up toe, heel to toe, they seem the same length. Uh, so it must only be the way that my foot sits in the shoe. But this one, basically what I'm saying is this one fits true to size, I'd say. I was size size six in this and I wouldn't, I wouldn't go up. I have slightly narrow feet and I found it was a good fit for me. The upper is nice and snug, you can get it nice and snug around your foot. Um, nice lightweight upper, nice lightweight feel on the shoe when you first put it on. So a quick word on fit then in the Brooks Hyperion Max. I ran in a UK and a half, true to size, that's my size. I had no problems with them at all. Plenty roomy, good lockdown fit. And uh, that's how I'd recommend, I think, on first run impressions, go true to size. So the fit uh, has been good for me, true to size. It's quite a long uh, toe box there for me. Like, I'm slightly small for my size, so sometimes prefer, especially in a shoe like this, where I would use a bit more speed work to go for a tighter fit by going half size down. But I think in general, this is definitely a true to size shoe and it's got a comfortable fit, good support around the heel and a nice lockdown in the midfoot as well. So I've just stopped six miles into my first run with the Brooks Hyperion Max. I'm doing it on an old paved railway path here. I've got 11 miles I'm doing in total. Mixture of paces. I've kind of sort of done almost like a progression run on the first five out. And I'm going to do the same on the way back. Initial thoughts in this shoe. Good step in comfort. I think the uppers are really nice. They hold the foot nicely. I've got pretty decent lockdown. Pretty good heel hold. Yeah, it's a little bit loose for me, I think. Just a little bit. Uh, there's plenty of room in the toe box. Good wiggle room. I think underfoot, you've got quite a wide base to land on, good platform to run on. You know, that first two miles, I actually, of those six, I found them to be a bit firm and maybe a little bit slappy and not quite as sort of punchy and lively and springy as I was hoping. You know, I thought these shoes might do something, you know, really quite energetic. Those first two miles, it was a little bit like, oh, they, they don't feel quite like they are doing that. But they have sort of softened up a little bit as I've got into them. And as I picked up the pace, they sort of worked better for me. I still think you know, you've got quite a soft footbed 
feeling on sensation underfoot when you sort of land into that footbed it is a little bit kind of sinky i don't know whether that's kind of the midsole or the outsole or a mixture of both but it's definitely quite soft there is spring back there is energy but i wouldn't say these are the liveliest shoes i've ever run in on given these first sort of early miles i've clipped some good paces at that though i've managed you know i'm ticking along quite nicely at kind of six and a half minute miles towards the end of that and they ran really nicely at that pace they are light they are agile i think they do feel quite nimble are they the liveliest daily trainer that i've run in i'm probably not based on this kind of first run or the first six miles so far but yeah we're going to see now on more tired legs on the way back what they give you know for that kind of yeah when you get into sort of deeper into what might be a longer training run so let's go and find out So just back in the car after end up doing about 10 and a half miles just short of an hour and a half running which is pretty flat good runnable terrain first run in the hyperion max yeah i think it's a mixed bag for me really if i'm gonna sort of summarize how that run went i i'm surprised i was i was expecting more out of the shoes to be honest i thought they'd be more exciting a little bit more lively a bit more punchy they you know they tick over nicely but they're not i don't know they're not as fast as i thought they would be or at least in those final miles I didn't feel like they were giving back or saving my legs as much as I would kind of hoped. I was you know, very tired coming back in towards the end there. And whilst there's a decent platform to run on here, it's it's kind of, I would say it's sort of middling, kind of soft to firm. It's not hugely springy, that midsole foam, I don't think, but it does soak up a lot of the impact quite nicely. I don't think there's an overpronounced kind of roll through the shoe, but you know, you can clip along nicely in them. They do feel a little bit soft, but just when you think they're going to get a little bit too soft, then I think they return. So, yeah, it's a soft impact kind of soaking up kind of shoe. But is it kind of lively and, um, yeah, exciting? I don't know, it's sort of speedy or, you know, efficient enough. Yeah, in those early miles, I've also found it to be a bit kind of hard and a bit firm and not quite what I thought it would be. That said, I've run really well in them. They, they are light, they are agile, the uppers are super comfortable, good lockdown fit. And I have enjoyed running in them. They're not a bad shoe. I think I was just hoping for something that was going to be a little bit more wow. And from those first miles anyway, and that first impressions, I didn't get that. That's not to say that this shoe might not be a grower. Some people have said that once you've run in them a few times and that foam kind of comes to life a bit more, that it takes a little bit of a while. Um, but yeah, to me, I would say maybe people will find that they're a little bit firm and there's not quite that kind of that that punch and that kind of propulsion in each step that you might want from a more kind of lively daily trainer but more testing to be done and a happy 10 miles in them you know i'd happily run in them again uh, so we'll continue to test and we'll see i'm probably going to take them for a marathon at some point and see how they hold up over a longer distance but yeah so my first impressions are a bit mixed really uh, not a bad shoe didn't wow me looking forward to finding out more so my first run for my excitement about going out for a run in this shoe um I should probably preface this with I'd been off running for a week because I'd been ill. So I went out um, very keen to run, but not with that much ability in my lungs or my legs. So I'm going out for an easy run. And that is not what this shoe um, should be doing. So I had actually messaged the other run testers saying, oh, it's a bit, I was a bit disappointed by this um, because I've gone out for that easy run. And the, the shoe wasn't happy with me doing that. So when I went out uh, a few days later and I went on a club run and... The club run ended up being like an unintentional progression run. And throughout that run, as the pace picked up, I saw the benefit of the shoe more and more. Um, it it wants you to it wants to go a bit faster. That rocker is is a really lovely motion. That rocker um, from heel to toe, taking you along, it is it is nice. Now it's quite a firm feeling underfoot it's not when you hear the word max you might think like plumpy nice soft um cushioning it's not like that it's it's, it's on the firmer side um of cushioning but it's not hard um but that rocker kind of is almost pulling your pulling your foot you're not really pushing down that much 
um, through the sole. So I think it, it, there's that benefit to that slightly firmer sole um, for running fast. I felt like I was running a bit faster than my effort I was putting in. I was going a bit faster than that, than I deserved. Um, but yeah, really nice heel to toe. You can feel that. You can feel that rocket. It does feel like a, a speedier shoe. So I went out again. I've been out four times now in this. Uh, that first easy run, which neither of us, me and the shoe, neither of us were happy with that pace. Um, but progression run. A bit, a bit more like a tempo. I think it's a really good tempo shoe, mid, mid length tempo. It'll be great. Um, longer, longer intervals, very good. So just heading out for first run in the Brooks Hyperion Max. It's a nice, chilly and fresh morning here in the UK. I've got a progressive 10k on the plan, starting off nice and easy, working up to a steady pace, uh, just to see how the shoe handles different range of those paces uh, for training runs. I'm really looking forward to this shoe, really like the Hyperion Tempo, but did find it could get a bit slappy for me over time, especially as a heel strike. So I'm hoping the more rocker design of the Hyperion Max will suit me even better. And I'm hoping it's gonna be a very enjoyable run, uh, enjoyable shoe in general. So all done on the first run in the Hyperion Max. Uh, it was an enjoyable run this morning, started around about 4.30, the K pace worked down to 3.40ish for uh, the last one or two. And yeah, the shoe was good. Like it's very much a shoe that kind of gets out of the way and lets you run. It's very light. Uh, the foam is supportive. Uh, it's not got a huge amount of like response or anything, but you know, it's got a little bit there and it's light and it's poppy. And when you speed up, the shoe just rolls with you. Like the rocker is noticeable. It's, Got a smoother ride than Hyperion Tempo, but mostly it's a shoe that just doesn't really intrude on the run. And it felt comfortable for those easy miles at the start, and then was light and uh, got out the way when I want to run a bit quicker. So it's, it's a nice shoe, it's easy to get in sync with. I really noticed actually the rocker on downhill has got a lot of roll forward, I found. Uh, <laughs> it's like it really suddenly kicked into gear, but in general, it's quite a nice, smooth, unintrusive action and just an enjoyable shoe to have on. So yeah, nice first impression. I'll be interested to test the comfort over longer runs to see if there's enough cushioning there for me for all those longer runs and then do some more top end pace stuff because worked down to a steady pace at the end there, but didn't really sustain like a really hard effort for a long period. I'll be interested to see how that feels in the shoe compared to shoes with plates. So more testing to do, but yeah, enjoyable first run in the Hyperion Mac. So I think the Hyperion Max is gonna join like a little clutch of shoes that I think are really nice options on the market that are lightweight, um, plateless, daily trainers that can do fast stuff, are kind of tilted more towards fast stuff, but have a bit of comfort there for easy runs as well. So talking about things like the Hoka Mac 5 and the New Balance Rebel V3. Looking at those shoes, it's, it's probably more similar to like the Hoka Mac 5 because of the rocker you've got going on rather than the really soft and bouncy foam you have on the New Balance, but it's a bit firmer than the Hoka. Uh, I think it's gonna have a little bit more pop for fast stuff, but might not have the comfort over longer runs. But I do think it's gonna be a really versatile shoe if you like a ride like this that is a bit firmer, but cause it's not harsh at all because of the way it rolls through. You're not, it's not gonna be be uncomfortable I think so even though some people will obviously want more foam on their shoes it's not a particularly well cushioned shoe despite the max in the name I think it's gonna be a nice versatile option I'm looking forward to using it for a nice variety of runs for the rest of the review I think when you're comparing it to Hyperion Tempo I think that was a fun shoe a shoe actually I did enjoy using for a variety of stuff but I tend to keep that to shorter stuff because the ride just got a little bit uncomfortable for me over longer efforts I think the rolling motion on the shoe you know, reduces that harshness uh, because Dino Flash Foam isn't like the softest, most comfortable foam on the market. It's got a bit more pop to it. So having it in a rocket shoe like this, I think makes it that little bit more suitable for longer efforts. So we'll see how those go. So in summary, good shoe for what it's designed to do, which is to be a speed shoe for your faster sessions during the week, during your training cycle, take it to the um, to club sessions, go out for your tempo runs in it, even go and do a race in it if you're not going down the carbon route. Something like this, which has got that rocker, um, it's going to help you go that nudge you a little bit faster. Um, good, a good option for that. I'd say what it's not going to do is it's not going to be your all rounder. So I didn't feel like it was happy with me running at an easier pace. I think you need to put that effort through it to really see that rocker and to to glide with the shoe rather than feeling um, the firmness was maybe a bit too firm when I was trying to just run easy. Um, but for going a bit faster, putting a bit more effort, 
I liked it.